I am personally so pleased to um, welcome Susan Norgett here. I mean, we go back a long way. I could, she's, a, she's a good friend and just like a lovely human being as well as, <laughs> as, as well as sweet. probably, I would say the most respected film publicist and marketing you know, specialist around. Um, uh, all you have to do is go, I don't know, I put a Facebook post about this and like dozens and dozens and dozens of people just got on there talking about how great Susan is. Um, <laughs> but um, let me read off just a, a, a handful of the films that she's worked on, um, just to give you an idea of, of the quality. Um, and like, this is just a partialist because the, the films fly by on her website so fast. And in my head. <laughs> yes. Okay, so- Don't, No others, pop quizzes after, because I might um, forget. Okay. Among others, The Square, How to Survive a Plague, Man on Wire, The Act of Killing, Searching for Sugar Man, The March of the Penguins, Tarnation, All That Breathes, Cutie and the Boxer, Born into Brothels, Finding Vivian Meyer, Cave of Forgotten Dreams and My Winnipeg. Ah, thank you. Just, I'm from Winnipeg. Just, and then there's <laughs> he, a had to get called, it, he had to get that in there. Well, what I really had to get in was a thing called The Kids Grow Up, which um, my film that uh, about my daughter um, that you somehow, along with um, uh, Shadow Distribution, managed to get into the Angelica Film Center the show there oh, and you got, go, Doug. <laughs> you got got the New York Times to write a feature Sunday feature about it and somehow finessed A.O. Scott into reviewing it. So um, I was, you know, thoroughly thrilled with the work you did on it. So let's let's start from the beginning because you you are in a sense transitioning from doing straight publicity. In yeah, fact, that's how would, true. How would you describe what you do now? What I do now, yeah, um, I am still doing straight publicity, strictly strictly film. Um, I'm doing more consulting work, um, marketing and distribution consulting, which covers a lot of ground. Um, sort of depends on the client. Uh, I like to look at things very holistically, so. In one case, I was brought on very, very early, and it was quite ideal, one case quite recently, um, because I was really able, they were still finishing the film, and we were able to develop, you know, a list of film festivals and start, you know, establishing particular relationships in the industry. Um, we started reaching out to sales agents. Um, programmers uh it's it's you know by di distribution and marketing consultancy cons consultancy encompasses an awful lot and i can, we can get into that later yeah. publicity is certainly part of that um so while i was primarily doing film publicity before and i it, it you know it's a it's a it's an intense job i had a lot of clients i still do um, I've been doing it a long time and I found over all these years, I won't tell you how many, but you can probably tell by Doug's list of films. Um, I've made a lot of, uh, relationships, uh, in other sectors, uh, obviously distributors, cause I've worked with so many distributors, uh, sales agents. I work side by side with sales agents programmers and because i do so many films internationally those same categories extend to the international um film landscape so i've really i realized wow i know a lot of people <laughs> i kind of know how this thing works though you know the last few years i don't know that anyone knows how this thing works um but you certainly know the people who populate the landscape. Um, however, uh, the paradigm or paradigms may have shifted distribution wise. Um, so I've really kind of parlayed that into 
what I see is more of an extension of what I've done before. Um, and I'm also, I've been, I've EP'd um, three films in the last, gosh, four years, I guess. Uh, Co-produced a film. Um, I was an associate producer on another, all docs. And I'm um, producing a film documentary now. We're in the early development stage. We we will get back to that. And also, I was struck by your phrase, you know how, you know, I'm talking about, you know how it works. So we'll, we'll get back to how does well, it work? <laughs> but, we, I, I don't even know how to, extend, I mean, there's probably a good analogy. No one knows how it works anymore. But you sort of, you know the pieces of the machine you know the parts of the machine the machine is again i i can't i i don't know the right metaphor for this but it's things not, are constantly shifting parts are being replaced i suppose it's funny you um you must read brian newman's newsletter right and I and do, yeah he did he did an end of the year summary and basically it came down to nobody knows anything which is just nobody knows anything which is a paraphrase of the famous william goldman quote about hollywood yeah uh, and uh, you know, the more we learn, and the older we get, the more we realize nobody knows anything. Yeah, um, yeah, so, exactly. I think you do know enough things that we can um, pick your brain here. Um, how did you get started in publicity? Did you grow up? I mean, did you want to be a filmmaker growing up? Did no, get... I studied. I my my, under, my undergraduate degree was in cultural studies. This is in Canada. And, um, you know, there were there were some significant texts like John Berger and Walter Benjamin and so on. So John Berger, Ways of Seeing, was really formative. Marshall McLuhan. Um, and then I went on to study film. Um, I knew I didn't want to be an academic, um, but I was always, um, it kind of got me on to, the cultural studies kind of got me on to, on to film. And I realized um, I loved I loved cinema. Um, I loved watching films. I loved talking about films. I didn't like writing about films so much. <laughs> it's the no more academia. Um, though weirdly, I do a lot now. Um, but it was more of a critical studies program and less about filmmaking. I never aspired to be a filmmaker. Uh, but when I left, um, I was in Toronto at the time and there weren't a lot of, actually technically I was in Vancouver, but then I moved to Toronto and there weren't a lot of opportunities. Um, so I worked in production for a while, knew absolutely that was not what I wanted to do. Um, and then started working for a film co-op in uh, I hope it's still around in Toronto it might not be actually uh which would be a little bit like what the IFP was now called Gotham back in the day but with a um they used to do film um, equipment rentals and there was also a, a programming component so I was dealt with both membership well everyone had about four jobs and also pro program the filmmakers films. So then mm -hmm. I thought, well, maybe I'll get into programming and I'll have to really fast forward because this is so, so, so long ago. And uh, there were, I still sort of did it on, on the side as it were, but then I got an opportunity to work for the Toronto Film Festival where that was on the table, but what they really needed is somebody who knew the community. Right. Um, Interestingly enough, you know, it, Toronto is in a, then it was called the Festival of Festivals. Um, it's now the Toronto International Film Festival. It was always an international festival. Um, and yet, weirdly, they didn't feel they had a strong enough link to the local community. So they brought me on um, to, I mean, essentially do publicity, but also to be somebody who could um work more with the local community again it was much smaller than that that job doesn't really exist and then it became publicity then it became publicity i thought you know i applied for an internal programming job um we were talking about rejections earlier it was like you're the, you were the next one down and it's funny it was one of those rejections that was 
actually kind of great because I, that's not where I should have been. So it actually, so I ended up doing publicity for the festival. I actually ran, was the, the um, press office director for uh, four years. It was a, um, uh, it was a sort of seasonal thing. And then for two years, uh, my only other full-time job since 1994, I was um, also doing the publicity and marketing for the uh, Cinematech, which is their year-round um, program yeah. under the Toronto International Film Festival group. So what led to starting to represent individual filmmakers and film? Yeah. So I left the festival deciding I wanted to represent individual films because then it was a smaller outfit and there there weren't a lot of publicists that represented films at Toronto. Very, very few, in fact, some local. Um, and I knew I wanted to do it internationally. So this is 94. Um, I started, uh, I worked with a friend of mine, uh, Lucius Barr, wonderful person who has been in publicity for many, many, many years. And he brought me on to help him in Cannes, uh, 94 with a um, couple of films. And then um, I started representing films at the Toronto Film Festival. Um, and then in 96 was my first Sundance. I was still living in Toronto and I represented Cold Fever, Icelandic film and a film by Joe Brewster, interestingly. And Joe is the Nikki Giovanni co-director right. with his wife, Michelle. Yeah. Here here six, a, a, a dramatic film called The Keeper. Um, so that was that was Joe's first feature. And they've been friends, good friends ever since. Um, and then, you know, it was then it was Sundance every year. And then um, I worked for the San Francisco, um, Peter Scarlett, who ran the San Francisco Film Festival, asked me in 95 to sort of help establish a publicity or better, I mean, establish, kind of establish a real publicity uh, marketing department at the San Francisco office, I guess, at the San Francisco Film Festival. So I had um, two, um, you know, five month contracts, 95 and 96 with them. And but while still, you know, starting to rep films at various film festivals. So it was really Sundance, Cannes, uh, Berlin. I started going to Berlin, um, did Berlin for a number of years and stopped for a number of years. And then I moved to New York in 99. <clears throat> so it's interesting, I mean, in a way, when you represent a film going to a festival, you are trying to help them get distribution. I mean, isn't that one of yeah. the primary goals for the filmmakers there? Yeah, though, um, you know, obviously sometimes, well, obviously, it sometimes I'll be attached to a film that has distribution at right. a film festival. It sort of depends on how far in the film's life it is. But I very often um, doing the first film festival um, that the film winds up uh, in. Um, so yeah, there, there it's very much about helping find them find distribution. And by helping them find distribution, I'm not the one doing that. I'm working right. with a sales agent, or maybe I'm just working with the producers. And that's something that I'm, you know, in the beginning, I was doing straight publicity. You know, I knew some of the names, but I, I, I yeah, I, I wouldn't have been able to do that in the same way that I am now. So here's a, here's a question that's always, you know, plagued filmmakers um, regarding publicity, um, particularly when they have someone like you on board who can go to various publications and, and, and pitch it, which is how much do you want to do then? And how much do you theoretically want to save for, you know, this, you know, if you should be so lucky as to get theatrical distribution uh, you you generally want the publicity as it's opening. That's so a how really much good question. Similar? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, generally, you're trying to get, um, I mean, trade reviews are the big thing. And once upon a time, 
it was easier to get a variety review or a Hollywood Reporter review or depending on the festival Screen International review. Um, IndieWire used to review a little more than they do now. It also really depends on the festival. So the big international film festivals, and I'd actually include Sundance in that, Sundance, Toronto, Cannes, Venice, Berlin. Um, um, it's that much easier by virtue of the film being in those particular film festivals. When you're talking about regional festivals, it's it's a lot more challenging. Um, even at Tribeca or at Doc NYC, which is not, I mean, regional to me, <laughs> right? Outside of New York. <laughs> it's very New York centric of me. Um, but yeah, it's really about getting those trade reviews are always key, especially for sales agents, for sales purposes. Um, getting, and again, it does not, it's not necessarily about a review, but getting a Justin Chang from the LA Times or a Manola Dargis from the New York Times. Um, um, if you're doing an international festival, festival, you know, a, a, a Peter Bradshaw from the Guardian or, you know, the list, the list goes on, but those, those key influential critics, um, who a sales agent can then go to a distributor you know, who, who, whose quote, um, a, 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 assuming it's positive, um, a um, sales agent can go to his distributor with. Um, is when you, it, say, when you, you say quote, you mean, I presume, uh, sorry, quote, that they're uh, doing review, a, could be, it could be a review. It's not going to be a review at a, a roundup of the festival, festival right? You yeah. To... Yeah. So one of the things I do just so when I, when, when, when we're representing a film at a, at a particular festival, um, we, um, you know, we send out what we call in the biz press breaks. Um, so there's the, there's the reach, there's the outreach to the, to the, to the, um, critics, film writers, um, producers, etc. Um, and then there's sort of the resulting press. So once something hits, whether it be a mention in a preview piece or a full review or something in a dispatch or a festival wrap, um, you know, we send links out to that coverage and I, I pull quotes. Right. Um, and those quotes couldn't later be used in on posters or um, in other in other in other press materials. But, you know, there'll be a nice little list of little group of quotes that um, a sales agent can then send off to, you know, in the midst of a film festival in the mid in the middle of Sundance or the beginning of Sundance or Cannes or Brennis to to um, potential distributors. At at um at this point, given your reputation, like how many filmmakers approach you and ask you to do work for them versus the ones that you take on? You're pretty choosy, aren't you? About about the films? I'm yep. Um it has to be a match. So by how many, I mean ratio. I no, I don't I I I I can't really I don't know what the percentage is. Uh yeah, I mean, I, I, I it sounds. I mean, if it doesn't sound too pretentious, I, you know, curate the films I take on. It has to be a fit. There are films I like that aren't the right fit for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, you know, and I, and it, you know, when I, it, even just based on that list that you read out earlier, those are all very different films. Right. Um, and even, you know, even if you just. I, I do narrative films as well, but but when I think about the documentaries I've done, um, you know what? It, it's more what I am less interested in. Um, less interested in. Sometimes it's less interested in, subject wise. Um, but form is really important to me. The I mean, cinematic documentaries. Um, I mean, I'm interested in cinema and, yeah. um, I, you know, admittedly, I'm, I don't do a lot of straight issue docs, whatever that means, but we sort of have a sense of that. Um, I'm super supportive and inter I mean, 
often very engaged in whatever the issue itself is. Um, but that's not my forte. Um, um, but yeah, it just, it's, it's a, if it's a match, it's a match. I, I don't know what the percentage would be in terms of what, how many, uh, approach me versus how many, yeah. um, well, I think what, you know, the... and I also don't want to take on a lot. You know, it's, it's basically me and one other person. I'm not a big, you know, it's not a big company and we don't have, I don't have account executives that'll take, you know, you take three, you take two, you take, so it doesn't work that way. So it really, you know, I'm, I'm hands on. So it really has to be a fit for me. Yeah. And, you know, getting back to, you know, um, just how respected you are among uh, the people you do know with. Sorry, sorry to be embarrassing you with praise, Susan, um, but um, deal with it. Uh, you know, I think you're one of those uh, people who like just the fact that you're attached to a project makes it noteworthy to the film critics and the journalists and hey. things like that. So, so that's well, they, I mean, the people that have been in been doing it for a long time know at least I'm particular that I'm you know it, it, yeah. some people will think oh I <laughs> don't like her taste or sensibility or whatever it is um but but among the not so much among the critics but <clears throat> they at least I know I guess they at least know that I've chosen careful yeah. well you know it's like what I say when I'm working on as, as a producer on someone else's film I mean I I don't love producing, you know, I would only take it on if I absolutely love the film. Yeah. Really like the filmmaker and thought it would, it was you know, something unique. And then I can, I like, I have an easy pitch. It's like, I hate producing, but I'm producing this because yeah. I could, not, you know, it's just so great. I could Curation isn't down. really the word. It's, it's, yeah. it just has to be a match. You have to be excited about it. I just want to be, be exactly. excited. How can you sell it if you can't yeah, get excited? Yeah, exactly. I, I agree. So what is the is the best time to approach you when you've gotten into your first festival, would you say? Or, you know, and, and what festivals, you know, you mentioned a bunch of festivals before. And I guess yeah. a, a big issue facing filmmakers, particularly those that have, you know, are, are short of funds or poured everything into the film, probably still owe money on the film. When is it um, a good idea to hire a publicist? Let's not even say you, but a publicist. Um, and what, when is it smart to do that? And when is it like uh, save your money, do it yourself, yep. work with the festival's publicity team? Exactly. Great. You get it. Um, I I think, you know, it, it really varies. Um, Obvious if I already have a connection to somebody um, and they want to show it to me before they even get into a film festival, um, I'm very open to that. I personally don't like seeing <laughs> rough, rough cuts if it's for this, for publicity purposes. Mm -hmm. I like something at least close to a, a fine cut just so I can really... Um, so I'm really feel like I'm seeing the finished film. I mean, color correction, I don't care about that, even final music, but, um, and look, sometimes people are just so damn busy finishing their films. It's it's often the last thing they're thinking about. Um, I suppose I'm saying, make it not the last thing you're thinking about, but I'm, I'm sympathetic when it, they're already quite late. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's 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 great to see something before um it even gets into a film festival but certainly at the point it gets into and by before you know could be a few weeks um but certainly by the time it gets into a major film festival so that leads you to the next question which is what's a major film festival <laughs> um so when is it worth hiring somebody? So I think it's worth hiring somebody for Sundance, um, Cannes, Venice, Berlin, uh, New York Film Festival, Telluride, 
Tribeca? Tribeca. Maybe. Possibly Doc NYC, depende. Um, and I'm sure I've possibly CPH Docs. Okay, let's get back to you said depending. Yeah. Depending on what? Hmm. Um, and in a way, this is what a publicist is going to, an honest one is going to tell you. Um, depends on the film to a certain extent. Depends on your budget. Like, I feel like I, you know, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll use, I don't know why. I mean, only because Doc NYC is so fresh. I think it's probably worth exploring that and if you have a limited budget some someone can maybe do something in a more limited way and again how do you structure that what does more limited mean exactly um you kind of have to in a way you have to sort of i, I kind of feel you have to go whole hog so what does more limited mean sometimes people will say well we only have this much money but we can do the press kit we can do all the photos new <laughs> that's that's not where you're taking i mean yes you, you'd be taking work off my plate but that's just the kind of thing where it's so important to have me or somebody else look at your images in fact not look at choose your images oh. with you know on your approval um edit possibly write elements of the press press notes um so that's actually when someone says well we can do that part for you that's not no so then you know if you have a more limited budget you're not going to get certain people um and then okay you get what you pay for sometimes um sometimes someone will just love a film love a film and um, they'll be willing to do it for less. Um, or they see this as maybe the first, you know, the first festival of a few. And then you can work something out where, um, you know, they'll do the U.S. festival, and then the next, um, the first European festival, international festival for less than if you hired different people for 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 different for different festivals but for the for the re what i call the regional festivals it could be san francisco it could be seattle it could be um dc docs it could be for like individual festivals um and that also includes includes a bunch of international it's it's becoming friends with whoever is running the communications or the press publicity departments in those in those places and um you know getting getting press lists and you know essentially doing it yourself um mm -hmm. and you know leaning on filmmaker friends who've done the same thing um maybe at the same film festival um, getting their advice, um, getting second opinions. Does this read well to you? I mean, uh, looking at other, looking what other, you know, looking at, looking at um, if you're having to do it yourself, um, looking at programs, you know, going online and looking at what program descriptions look like. Those are those log lines that you see, you know, if you just go to the Sundance announcement recently, those log lines that you read are 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 um they're not the festival's log lines. They're right. the they, the festival hasn't written those. The festival writes the longer program notes. So look how look at how films are described. You all, everyone has an idea of what like this is effective. I want to see this film. I want to buy this film. Um I want to sell this film. Um you have a sense of of what works and what what doesn't right. um so i you know on one hand i want to empower filmmakers to be able to you know to to do it themselves when and look this is that that is the most 
that is the usual trajectory. You know, the Sundances and the Venices and the Cannes and the Toronto's of the world are, are the exception for most filmmakers, not the norm. So, right. yeah. Um, I just want to acknowledge that we were going to leave about uh, the last half hour or so open to questions from everybody here attending. So um, um, I know there's a bunch of questions in the chat, but uh, in, in, a, in a short while, if you do have a question, do what uh, Chris just did using the raised hand function. Um, and that way, uh, when the time comes, I'll just call on people in the order that the hands are raised. So. Um, so I, I do want to get to the marketing end. There's, there's, it's just, there's some really fascinating questions here of like, what do you actually, if you're, if you're coming on board before you're submitted, they've submitted to a festival or as they're submitting and waiting to hear, do you actually, you know, call friends at the festival and talk about the films that you're taking on and, um, do they approach you uh, wanting, you know, if they know that you're attached to a certain film? In other words, how helpful is it to have a publicist like yourself uh, in terms of getting into festivals? Getting into a film festival. Yeah. Um, I'd say not. When I'm wearing more of my sort of marketing and distribution consultancy hat that I'm actually, I'm right. doing that. So okay. I'm contacting festival. So then how do you work with the yeah. sales agent then? Where, where, I mean, the sales agent is- Now, that's, that's an, if you don't have a sales agent. So one of the things that I've been doing more of is in, also in EP, in my sort of film EP producer, producerial, I guess is a word, capacity um um it's 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 helping filmmakers find a sales agent um you know be it a u.s or um or international because i've worked with i've worked with a really wide swath of film mm -hmm. of sales agents um for documentary and beyond and i think I'm sure a lot of the more experienced filmmakers um, in this in this session are pretty well aware of who those people are. Um, there are not that many sales agents out there. There are not that many publicists out there, film publicists out there. Um, it's a it's a you know on one hand great you have the list. On another, if you don't get those people, then where do you go? Exactly. I'm kind of amazed that there aren't more of um, both, but there aren't. Do you mind? Um, I mean, we know, like you said, the Synetic, Submarine, uh, places like that here. But um, what are what are some of the um, international sales agents? The do like say Dogwoof Outlook, Dogwoof uh, Outlook, Cinefield, Met Film, Media One. Um, um, Party film sales. Um, um, blah, 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 blah. Um, That's a good starter list. There are others. There are others. Um, Hanway takes on certain docs. I mean, they're real doc specialists. And then there are other sales agents that that sometimes represent docs. Um, and I'm sorry to anyone I have worked with before who <laughs> may. Um, see this or hear about this, and I haven't mentioned their name. Um, Sean, A.K. Connie, I see your questions in the chat. You guys know better than to just put them in the chat. Come on, use the raised hand thing. Um, so let's talk about this transition then to the distribution and and, and marketing. Um, and I'm not. It's not a. It's in addition to. It's like what I talk right. about okay. my 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 documentary producing side hustle. That's still sort of a side hustle. So I have a series of I I, I maybe I want a whole bunch of side hustles. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the side hustle. No, the main oh. the main thing is still my bread and butter is still is still is still publicity and marketing. Yeah. Okay, but let's talk about your side hustle. Tell tell us about that. What it, what is this? I mean, does it involve? 
overlapping with the role of the sales agent or, you know, um, uh, you know, what, what does it entail? That's well, you're different. talking about the, the marketing distributions. Exactly. Closely side. That's actually not so much a side hustle. That's of a piece with the public. No, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah the, I the, thought the, the producing thing is the side hustle. Okay. No, because you're sort of transitioning into, into that role. And, and um, I know you wanted to talk more about it. So. Oh, um, um, what, what well, I want to do what's practical for the people on this well that it's all of a it's all of a piece and okay uh, yes i do but i do think it's question. i absolutely think it's of a piece and i think you know i i brought this up earlier so so it it's certainly i'm not absolutely not here to replace a sales agent they know way more than me i couldn't cut a deal if my life depended on it so no you could say it you know sometimes they play a bit of a, what used to be called a producer's rep um, I suppose it, it's a little bit closer to that, though, you know, I'm working with filmmakers on, um, you know, their visual materials and so on. So it's it's, you know, it's there's 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 more there's more involved again, the positioning, the marketing um, and a good a good sales agent is going to help you with that as well. So so I really see myself as, you know, it's working with filmmakers to find a sales agent. And then at the point they bring on a sales agent, I can step back mm -hmm. um, in a number of ways. But, you know, with a couple of films fairly recently, all the festival entries, um, submissions, calls, if that was what it took, emails, were well before um, a sales agent came on board. And one of the reasons for that is a lot of sales sales agents are waiting for that first significant festival invitation. So you're having to work with filmmakers before then to put together that master plan, um, at least master plan is for submissions. Um, uh, for the for the festivals, I mean that's months in advance. So let's let's go through that master plan then. Let's say I call you. I'm I'm wrapping up a film. I've submitted to, Sund let's just say Sundance. Yeah, Sundance isn't. Um, but, but the thing is, you. I'm going to stop you right there. You've only submitted to Sundance. That's a big mistake. <laughs> you should have already submitted to a a number of them because I think one of the things, and I'm actually really glad you brought that up. I hear that less so now than I used to, but they'll choose one or two. We've submitted to Sundance in Berlin, for instance. Meanwhile, deadlines have passed right. in other festivals and they don't get into Sundance in Berlin because, you know, mathematically, <laughs> you're not likely to get it into Sundance or Berlin, you know, to get into thousands Harvard. of submissions and so on. So it's a real mistake to put your eggs in only one or two big festival baskets. You should be working out that plan, you know, put together a spreadsheet, which I love doing, um, with various deadlines, you know, early deadline, regular deadline, late deadline, uh any number of columns in terms of country and and type of festival and um what else what else contacts and start submitting start submitting and don't limit it don't limit it and i should also add that it's overwhelming i mean there's so many film festivals so and festivals beget festivals. So for some of the smaller ones, some of the smaller ones will come on board once you get into they, you know, they 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 window shop. You know, as soon as Sundance announces, you start getting emails from all sorts of film festivals. Um, um but yeah, work that plan out in advance. It's a huge, it's it's a crusher when I hear from people that they've only submitted to one or two and they've, you know, the ship has already sailed as far as deadlines and others, which isn't to say that some festivals won't be open 
to look at looking at something after 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 the deadline is passed they will but um respect the deadlines and certainly having a sales agent on board or having a someone like me on board is the difference between getting them to look at something a little bit late too because that's that call um so yeah plan ahead oh you're muted sorry i was coughing I didn't... <laughs> um so you'll make those calls then you will um you know what will you what will you do with a call who will you call and who won't you call you know filmmakers probably well, usually like i mean when i say call it's probably yeah. an email these days okay but um contact who who will i and won't i yeah i mean will you um yeah i mean will you you take on a film you'll how how does that process work will you make a kind of announcement put out a press release or what um uh, before a film gets into a festival uh well before i assume you're kind of working behind the scenes with the filmmaker waiting no it wouldn't be about a press release it would be about reaching out to particular programmers festival directors and mm -hmm. i you know i'm usually contacting the people i know best at what who wherever that may be so it might not be the artistic director mm -hmm. but or it could be if that's the person i know best right. um but you know one sort of develops their closest um people at various um festivals and otherwise so um yeah and and sometimes it's you know maybe you're not the person but well sometimes it's did you if you know if they've already submitted to the the festival have you seen it yet if yeah. it's if it's if it's, if it's a question of you you know they've already they're already three weeks or a, a month too late for a deadline then it's more of a special plea situation but otherwise it's sort of checking as to whether they've it's in their radar not only whether it's in their radar but let me put help let me put it in your radar <laughs> right um, um i have a ton more questions for you but there's so many hands up i'm just going to ask one one more before i turn it over to, to other questions which is where do you think the marketplace is now and does that impact how you go about doing your job you know like maybe since uh from before covid say or before like it's, uh, it's, it's, in terms of the terrible state of film distribution that <laughs> exactly um it doesn't fundamentally impact it in terms of the sort of day-to-day -day and what's necessary to do to get the job done the way i work with filmmakers i think that um i think so often what i find the role my role and the role of somebody in my position is is often um yes you're the publicist but you're often the hand holder the shoulder to cry on the um you know the person that occasionally has has to wants to just because you care about the film and the filmmaker give them a reality check too set expectations um you know a filmmaker should all should always be the most aspirational on any team no one is going to be as passionate no one no one is going to care as much about your film as you and so i mean if someone went into it if a filmmaker went into it thinking i'm not going to get distribution or i don't know you know i don't is there is there even an audience for this I I would worry about that because I'd rather just sort of bring someone down to earth, but have them up here than down there, where I, you know, having to bring them up. 
I mean, it's really, it's, it's, a, it's a tough time. And I mean, I'm sure you've done a million and one sessions where it's just been talking about that. I, I, know, I'm, I know people have been attending panels here and there, Doc NYC, DC Docs, there was one about the sort of the state of the state of distribution. Um, you know, we know how tough it is. Um, but I think, you know, and I, I do find myself working very closely with sales agents in um, setting kind of real world expectations um, for films in the marketplace. And I think, um, I think, um, you know, I really see see a, a huge part of my role, and and it's actually something I enjoy most is working really closely with filmmakers in terms of just, um, you know, having that ongoing dialogue as to you know what you know there's the the film's particular experience at any given festival or series of festivals, but. Um, there's also just the, the the constant dialogue about you know what's what's going on out there and and i know filmmakers are very aware of sometimes all too aware of like you know this person is film you know they've sold and they've sold and you know they're in this festival and i and I, I i i completely understand that i would be exactly the same way but um I, I sort of see myself if for for less experienced filmmakers because some filmmakers are, you know, more know a lot more than I do as far as you know festivals and so on, um, in many ways. Um, but for less experienced filmmakers, um, it really is about being a kind of guide. Um, the answer, yeah. Um, okay, let's get to some of the questions that that folks have. Um, You've been waiting patiently. Chris, you're up first. Hi, Susan. Thanks for being here. This is a really great kind of, I guess, leading into your comment about like handholding. What do you like? What is your, I guess, ideal client like? What do you like for your filmmakers to kind of come in ready with? I know that you're like, the point is to craft the strategy with them, but what do you like them to be aware of? You want them to have, like, for example, like, a good sense of who their audience base is and who like the general size of that and stuff like that. Is there like a list? It's like, like oh, I wish that they kind of Yeah, I'm not sure that like I I you know it's 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 I think for some films, certainly if it's about a particular issue where you know there are um any number of ways to reach out to particular uh, particular audience I wish I could think of a good example and I can't um um you know I do think that that filmmakers that again even though I don't do a ton of social issue films I I mean I should I do it I do a number of films that, that where there's a, a social issue is part of it but I it's not the issue that I'm necessarily glomming on to um but I think, um, you know, the people I like to work with the most are those people who have um, done a lot of research themselves, <clears throat> aren't necessarily arrogant or, you know, too sure of themselves in terms of who that audience is because they've done that research are open to dialogue about it. I mean, there's some people that are very, again, particularly interested in the issue, but they're not necessarily uh, film going types, whatever that may be. I don't even know. I mean, it, it, how do you even quantify that? Um, but it's, I think filmmakers that have educated themselves, um, as to and and look again, I, I I cut filmmakers a lot of slack when they're just focusing on finishing their films or making the film. I think people that have spent taken some time out and um, done a little bit of I don't know for lack of a better way of saying it, kind of professional development work at um, other film festivals, i.e. attended panels, um, 
you know, done, done, um, you know, I think, again, Doc NYC is very recent, but there are a lot of filmmakers that I I find, you know, they, they're, they're maybe in development for their film, um, could be a first, could be a third, um, but they're out there talking to people, they're attending panels, um, I think it's a great idea to, um, if you aspire to do international doc festivals to, you know, maybe attend CPH docs if you can, or any IDFA, start getting to know people and making connections. And those people that come to me and now they already have planted those seeds are great because they've already made connections. I, you know, I, among, you know, yes, I was talking about being a guide or a handhold, handholder, a facili facilitator as well. And it's easier for me to facilitate if I know that someone has um, done some of the research and done some of the outreach themselves. Um, yeah, and in terms of people I like to wear, people who are, you know, their personality qualities as well, just, you know, <laughs> that probably don't need to be said, but, you know, just an, an openness, um, the willingness to uh, go out there and hustle and not expect a sales agent and publicist to do it all for you. And I realize that some people are shy and don't feel as comfortable about doing that. But, um, you know, I love it when, when, you know, if you're at a film festival and you only have a week there, I, I love seeing filmmakers just like they do everything. They do the panels, they go to see other people's <laughs> films. They, they go to every party. It's, it's great. It's great because they'll actually help my me do my job because they'll meet somebody and they'll say, I got a card for somebody who writes for the New York Times. I got a card from somebody who's with a sales agency and they're interested in seeing my film. That's that's great. Great. Thanks. Um, Gabriella. Thank you so much, Doc Susan. How exciting to see you. Thank you. What are the deliverables that one should have when going to you? Like, if you're like, okay, shoot me an email or <clears throat> go and to your website, what are the key things that need to be out there? Yeah, that's a great idea. That's a great question. So deliverables are basically, and this is where you hire somebody to help you with those deliverables. So it's deliverables. Okay, deliverables. Well, that. that you hire somebody to help you with the deliverables that you need to then send out to potential festivals and sales agents and so on. So it's really a press kit. So if you can, if you haven't written anything, more often than not, um, you've had to apply for grants. You've had to apply, you've had to, to ask for money. You've had to have some kind of a treatment or DAC, treatment and DAC. You've had to have some kind of a log line a description of the film. So generally I ask for whatever written materials exist. And um, especially with documentaries, they're, they're, I mean, there's practically always something um, that's had to be sent to, you know, various funding organizations. So often I'll pull language from that. Um, um images um a selection of images um and i usually ask for as many possible um within reason um from which i select you know a short list of you know for a film festival you really shouldn't have more than sometimes you know they'll they'll sometimes ask for five you don't need to give them five I usually want to see one kind of key image and maybe there, maybe, maybe three. Um, so that's a deliverable. So, uh, you know, I'm, I, I would ask for a number of images um, to select from uh, any kind of synopsis log line you may presently have. And if you don't have anything, any other written materials. And again, they're probably what you've used for a DAC and or funding applications. Great, thank you. Thank, uh, Christine, you're up. 
Yes, thank you. And thank you, Susan and Doug, for this. Um, so uh, I can relate to, relate to the side hustle thing. Uh, my, uh, I flip-flopped. Originally, I was um, PR, uh, branding, strategy, and corporate social responsibility, and film was my side hustle. And now that's been a complete flip-flop. So, um, but I do believe in strong foundations and all that kind of, you know, all the, the kind of things that you're talking about here. So to approach you, or I'd say then I'll open it up to anyone else about coming on as a executive, executive producer or producer, what are you, what's the best way to do that? And I am asking about you actually. But it's a side hustle. Okay. Um, not radically different, I suppose than how you would approach me about the other just in terms of I don't know that's a, that's a tricky one because it's they've all when I've done it it's they've sort of come about in different in different ways um yeah I mean have have some I mean be able to um articulate <laughs> You know, send send an email is fine, obviously. Um, that's how we communicate these days. And just having a clear, um, some kind of a clear description of what your film is about and or what you want it to be about or what you see as, um, you know, if it's in the early stages. I mean, I, my favorite documentaries are those documentaries that are sort of start one way and... <laughs> end up um quite differently because they're making discoveries and shifts along the way but um yeah i don't i mean uh i wouldn't expect especially if it's the very beginning stages um i wouldn't expect a lot of information but um probably you've again had to had to submit to funder funders um, and have, we have a, we something have a put together in the way of a DAC or even just a basic description. We, we have a deck and a promo reel, but that, 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 that kind of thing. And a, so that the normal type of thing. Susan, I've, I've muted you on accident. I'm sorry. Uh, I think you have to, yeah, there you go. Yeah. That was odd. Um, yeah, look, some people have snappy decks. Some people only have a description. Um, yeah, what you've done before. Does, what's a snappy does a deck? Snappy, does a, no, does a snappy deck help that significantly? No, not really, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, look, I mean, I suppose more is better. Um, so if... Uh, yeah, if a deck is part of it that, you know, has description and who's involved and so on. I mean, that could be in another form. It doesn't have to look pretty. Um, but, you know, again, it depends on what point you're at. Like a promo reel means that you're further along. Um, I don't know. It depends on there's so many other factors, but it has to feel it has to be a fit. Uh, Cameron, your turn. Yeah. Hi, Susan. Thanks so much uh, for all of this incredibly helpful information. Um, I'm wondering when you partner with a filmmaker, um, do you like when if they have a marketing team or some kind of team attached, uh, or is that something that you help the filmmaker figure out? I'm mo I'm mostly thinking about independent doc. Uh, film producers and, you know, trying, like you said, to navigate this uh, broken uh, distribution landscape. And maybe you're thinking of doing some more creative out of the box, like guerrilla marketing and things like that. I've never, I've never worked with a filmmaker who's had a marketing team. <laughs> so I wouldn't know how that works. <laughs> but I've worked with filmmakers who have uh, maybe an impact producer um which is marketing uh to an extent so um i'm not quite sure how to answer that question 
but um having having people on your team who are maybe experts in particular areas um again if it's a if it's more of an issue doc and you have a an impact producer that's a huge plus in terms of laying the foundation um for um potential eventual distribution and 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 marketing um yeah i'm not quite sure how to answer that question but all right moving on to per piranha hope i pronounced that right hi doug thanks uh my very name is wrong doug very prayer, wrong prayer <laughs> not <laughs> it's prayer not yes hi prayer Susie. Not. um <laughs> I have more of like a two part question, uh, you know, and, and very specific to uh, what would you recommend are some of the PR and marketing strategies for a film about, say, death and dying that's thinking of a virtual launch? You know, the film hasn't gone to the prestige festivals, but has like a great approval rating amongst like hundreds of people who watched it. Um, and also, like, how important is a four wall, wall release today to build interest uh, amongst distributors? And in that, how important are the New York and LA theaters? Well, um, well, it's interesting because I've worked on two documentaries that deal with death and dying, the eternal memory and last flight home. So that subject is uppermost in my mind. There are um, organizations, advocacy groups um, out there that um, are worth um, looking into for partnership in terms of awareness. Um, so from a marketing standpoint, um, it's good to um, start investigating that. Um, I think that the next question was for walling for distribution. Um, that almost sounds like for walling instead of distribution. No, how important is it to get attention from distributors to have, um, you know, how important is it is to for wall a film in theaters to get more attention for say ancillaries? you want that a distributor is not going to want you to do that a potential dis you're talking about sorry a theatrical distributor a streamer streamers and salaries you know right um it's sort of a two-parter because a streamer is if you're if you're looking to a stream to a streamer to potentially distribute your film it's you would be working in partnership with them to put it in a theater if that's going to be part of the distribution plan. Uh, you, get, you know, just to also to get reviews from newspapers. Um, but you're not going to want to get reviews from newspapers papers for instance or from actually there are not many newspapers left <laughs> so i don't even make the distinction between newspapers and and otherwise but um i i want to know a little bit more about what the master plan is because you you want those you want the press to come out at the point at which the film can be seen by the greatest number of people if you've got a smaller release it sounds like you're just going to do a virtual launch of the film, right? I see. Okay. I was just it. wondering how, you know, if it's if it's worth it to do a theatrical at uh, all. Okay, thank you. Um, sometimes, which is not the answer you want. It really depends on the film. Um it's 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 harder than ever to get um audiences in theaters um, for smaller films. Um, you know, it depends on the film, it depends on the theater itself, it depends on where, you know, sometimes it would make se more sense to do, you know, New York is like, is the media capital of the world, of course, so everyone's thinking New York, New York, New York, and LA to a certain extent, but 
if it's about building your audience, um, which can be done through ways uh, apart from press. And this is one of the things that, that this is part of this changing landscape. It's not, you know, there, on one hand, there's, there are more bloggers than ever. Uh, there are fewer, the New York Times still counts for a lot. The LA Times still counts for a lot, but there are fewer and fewer outlets and um, important outlets. Um, there seem to be more bloggers than ever, but again, that's not gonna help with distribution. It's nice in terms of getting a number of quotes that you can put on your website and, and so on. Um, Susan, can I come in? Yeah. With does having festival laurels do anything, you know, with all the amount of festival laurels, even if they're very minor festivals? Does it, does it do anything in terms of getting distribution or getting yeah, enough? Or is it impressive to, you know, journalists or to um, distributors or streamers? Well, journalists, or journalists are going to pay more attention if a film has been at a number of prestige festivals, I guess what you'd call like A-list festivals, but Laurel's great, but you can have massive, massive, a massive number of Laurel's from smaller festivals. The only ones that are really going to register. I mean, it, the experience of going to film festivals and winning prizes is great. So that's, 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 that's value in and of itself. And festivals have become their own kind of distribution system. So that that is really valuable in and of itself. But if the question is, you know, what are critics going to be looking at? Yes, they're more likely to pay attention to a film that was, again, only because it's fresh. You know, Sundance was it Sundance in Berlin, and then you know it maybe ended up at New Directors New Films or something. Um, but um, yeah, and I I. I you know, uh, there are there are exceptions to every rule, of course, but certainly a significant film festival right. makes some kind of a difference. But 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 critics will only the other thing that's happening is there's just so much content out there. And I hate to reduce everything to content, but that's really what it's become. Um so the, you're you're competing with you know you may have a beautiful artistic foreign language documentary that's been at any number of prestige A list film festivals, but you're still on any given Friday you know when films launch. I won't even say open anymore. You're still competing <clears throat> in a manner with what's launching on HBO that day or that week? What's what's on iTunes? What's, you know, there's just, it's, um, I used to, you know, make the distinction between the two lanes, like theatrical and TV. Back in the day, it was like film and TV and film was only theatrical. And then there was broadcast, just two lanes. And now I don't even, I, I don't even want to call it a multi-lane highway. It's like a, <laughs> just like a multi-lane multi-lane highway and a big old car crash and a sinkhole <laughs> at the end on that note um, uh, let me let me go on to Susanna we we still have a bunch of questions so I want to try and get to as many is that too can. negative sorry <laughs> no 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 we, we, we've done a lot more negative here <laughs> but it's very you're you it's very hard to compete for attention be it distributors or or, no. or or in this case, the the the, que the question was about press. It's one it's, of the great challenges these days, distributor or not, publicist or not, you're still fighting. You're still you're still fighting. The you're still the fighting, and yeah. even with that, you know, uh, grand jury prize in world cinema, Sundance Film Festival, um, it's hard to. You know, there's just a lot of noise. There's yeah. a lot of noise. And also, you know, the other thing that I, I that has changed my job, because someone asked that earlier, 
the way I do, well, not so much the way I do things, though I'm having to fight harder, is um, the theatrical release, the, you know, the idea of the platform release when you're competing with, you know, a Netflix or an HBO or an Amazon or whatever, where anyone can see a film at any time. You know, they don't have to wait for it to come to you know their their city it's 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 harder because um editors and producers are really looking at that when they sort of balance things out yes there's the prestige film that is getting its platform release you know new york la da, da, da. they will pay attention to that for sure um but it it's just that much harder when you know you've got a film that everyone can see. Sure. Uh, Susanna, you're up. Great, generous presentation. Thanks so much. So our uh, short is called Drumming Bodies Dancing. It's 25 minutes long. It was co-produced with the Senegalese about the Sabar culture in Senegal. And um, just where to submit. I, you know, Clermont Ferrand and Sundance and things, but the no's are coming in. So do I best uh, go very specific and just do dance films, dance film festivals, or do I go, I just submit it to Jean Rouge uh, in Paris? I would do wider. I'm a, I'm a great believer in just going, going as wide as you possibly can. Okay. And I'm also not, I, I don't do short films. So I am aware of certain short film festivals, but that is not, that is not an area I know that much about, but uh, that Don't was limit an, yourself, and, in other words. That was an answer Susanna liked, so thank you. Um, uh, Alex. Dance you're... on camera, I see. Dance on camera is perfect. So the, including dance festivals, including any, you know, this is the thing, think, think expansively about where your film could end up. So it may be a dance film, but so yes, you have your dance festivals, you have your documentary festivals, you have short film festivals, um, there could be something you not even you don't even know about. Um, it's amazing the number of film festivals, specialized film festivals out there. Alex, you're up. An African film festival. <laughs> I've seen it. Um, hi, Susan. Um, I add my add my thank you to the growing chorus of gratitude here. Um, talk a little bit more about festival strategy. Um, one of the things I know from the inside. Um, uh, having worked on uh, on the inside of festivals is that a lot of the times that when you're in the selection committee, you know, debates, the the novelty of a film, in other words, how many premiere or how many festivals has it already been in, really does factor into whether or not the festival is going to is going to accept it. And I, I remember Sundance used to be really notorious for this, and they had these you know, really strict premiere requirements. I, from what I understand, they've kind of lifted that. But I mean, it still has to, it, it, I think it, it still has Not to so happen. Not so much. Not, Not so, so much. much yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So again, again, so, so when you're talking about submitting lots and lots. And Actually, lots, lots, I'm lots really, I'm really glad you're bringing that up because because there's a game theory. There are per, right? That's actually a really great question because I'm just saying go wide, but be very aware that the major film festivals will have, um, certain premiere status requirements. So that's a great question. Um, you know, Sundance, just as an example, they have their spotlight section, which I have a film in spotlight because it's already been to Cannes and Toronto and da, 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 da. I think it's only six films, something like that. But otherwise those are, those are world premieres. Those are world premieres. And then you have, you know, you'll have, let's say you, you're interested in both um, San Francisco and Mill Valley. One of the, they're gonna want a West Coast premiere. So you have regional premieres, you have international premieres, European premieres. I mean, you can't play Berlin and then play Cannes. However, while you may have an ideal scenario, this place, this place, this place, the idea of, you know, I worked with a group of filmmakers recently and they were very nervous about like going out to all these festivals because we want this one, this one, this one. I said, cross that bridge when you come to it. 
if you're so lucky to have a choice, <laughs> um, you know, if you really like, I mean, really, really want Berlin. It's, I mean, this is a first class scenario here. You really, really want can, but Berlin wants it. Use that Berlin invitation. The Berlin people would kill me as leverage to getting Khan to make a, a, a faster decision. Could be the other way around, but except it wouldn't because Berlin is February and, and Khan is later. So, so it ends up then being this weird sort of puzzle. So be very aware of the premier status requirements, but it's, it's a first class problem to have. You know, Tribeca desperately wants it, but we're still waiting to hear from Sundance. Or South by Southwest desperately wants it, but we're still waiting to hear from Sundance. Um, don't not submit right. um, because you have this ideal. And and yes, do your educate yourself in terms of the the premier status. And it's it's something it's you you're not necessarily going to know. And it doesn't necessarily say that on their website. You know, we require a west coast premiere um it's particularly that's why helpful. having a sales agent is is really helpful or just a really experienced producer uh or rep who who really knows how this works but that's a really good it's, uh, because people can really say, shoot themselves on the in the foot yeah sorry i'm talking over really you tough with, uh it's really tough with idfa because it's so close to sundance and it's its own you know, very prestigious documentary festival, but it may not be the best place to um, launch a world premiere. And and then, you know, you're bypassing Sundance. Yeah. And some festivals are a better fit. They may be not as prestigious, but they may be a better fit for your film. They may be a better launch pad for your film. So you know, you have to factor that in. And then it's also just like the particular trajectory if it's about festivals. Um, you know, what kind of, what does that look like? You know, in, in it, it, there's certain festivals that that are, are a series of festivals that could be a better trajectory for your particular film. Maybe it's a music doc, a very particular kind of music doc. South by Southwest may actually be a better bet than 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 Sundance. Um, yeah, at least as the as the world premiere. Um, Jody, I'll get to you in a minute. I'm sorry. Um, I promised um, Heather Spore, who can't come on camera, had a question, so I promised I'd ask on her behalf. Um, so that you wanted to know what the what the range of prices. Um, you suggest we allocate <laughs> for festival publicity versus release publicity. Well, they don't. You don't have to allocate release publicity if you get have a distrib distributor. But right. I guess these days maybe you do. Right. No. So that's a shift. If you're having to do it on your or own, or you're self distributing. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Having yeah. to do it on your own. Uh there's a range i mean it also you know it's again it's it's i mean the 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 the, the first one is usually the big one um and the first one is the one where you're in terms of the deliverables question that that's it's for that first festival and beyond and that includes, I mean, the press kit you put together is probably what's going to be used for dis distribution. Um, distributors, you know, will maybe add on to things, but they mostly, mostly um, use existing press materials. They may tweak a blog line or tweak a synopsis, but they usually don't sort of recreate them, create them wholesale, I should say. Um, I hate the money question. I really hate it. Um, you know, I you know it could be like five thousand dollars for like a good regional festival. Um, you know, up to maybe fifteen for 
a major film festival? It's a big range. Yeah. And I hate that question. Okay. We'll move but it's on. A, but it's a, a totally understandable question. Yeah, it's critical because you it's, know. No, I, I, I just. Yeah. As producers, we have to figure out how much we need to say. Oh, I a hundred percent. And I and people will ask me. Sometimes they'll just be a friend. Like you know, what's the line entry for this? You could meet in the middle and say ten. Yeah. It you know might not be enough or might be more than enough. Probably not enough. So, okay, away from hateful questions to Jody has a less hateful question, I'm sure. It is less hateful. Susan, I, I appreciate sort of the big, the big premiere and the things that you handle and, and having gone that route, there's then that next chapter with the film, you've, you have a distributor, but your MG is crap. So one of the things that you hear at every panel is carve out certain um, rights. And one of those few rights where you can actually, um, make any money is by doing sort of specialized screenings across the country. So for those of us who've done that with the film or are looking to do it with another film, I'd love to, I know that's not where your focus is, but just you started a little earlier to talk about social media, which is what every other panel says. You've got to, first of all, before you even, you know, start pre-production, start building your audience, building your audience. And then it just, yeah. but there's a lot of charlatans out there who, I know I've, probably hired a few who say, oh, I'll do social media for you. And then you're doing all the content and it's just sort of, there's no um, real clear um, sort of, you can't, there's no real measurables to see what that's actually accomplished. So I'd love to hear your take on that as someone who's been around as I have before that, that was where we are and where you think it's going. Cause that's certainly what you hear again and again as a filmmaker. So people are saying, bring on social me um, social media person you have to, yes, to the you, audience? Unless you, want to, unless you have somebody on your team who's going to every day put new content out so that you're building audience. You've, we've got a screening tomorrow in Buffalo at the Art Museum. We've got that to keep it going, keep momentum, yeah. because that's where you actually can make some money as a filmmaker is these, these sort of regional and specialized screening. So that's, you know, keeping it and, and getting regional press or regional, you know, the the influencer or the blogger in that that region ahead of time and during. It's 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 a it's a much it's much more niche, but it's almost where you have to go now if you want to make any money back on your film. Is the question is social media valuable or maybe okay well I can or, I can let's because I I mean I would say caveat emptor. <laughs> well, that's for maybe, people maybe, you hire, I guess. But I, I mean, I, I would say that social media, social marketing, mm -hmm. I like to kind of broaden it out. Social marketing can be very, very valuable, especially if you're doing what you are describing and doing a lot of um, uh, local screenings and 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 word of mouth screenings and so on. I mean, I think having a good website even if it's just a splash page but actually going back i i think that um in terms of building your audience because we haven't really spoken about that but that's a huge part of it and i think starting with having a, a wet you know as soon as you have decent materials as putting together your website um having a kind of um you know sign up function you know, having like a, a a general contact as well as if you want to hear how, you know, more about our film and where we're going next. Um, that is a great idea as far as building your audience. Um, but yeah, in terms of the social marketing or social media, I think it's a, I think it's a good idea. There aren't that many people who do it well. It's another group where I'm, I'm surprised there aren't more social media companies expressly for film. I have, a, you know, I, I have a very short list of, of, of people. Um, but, you know, there's maybe somebody, again, if just using the music doc and example, there may be somebody in Austin, for instance, who is the perfect person, if that's your launch for the film, um, who'd be, you know, ideal in terms of reaching a music loving audience. So it's not about 
the film or the doc crowd, there could obviously it's going to be some crossover, but the music people. Um, so, you know, that's really going to be dictated by the film itself and what the film is about. Um, but think outside the box that way. I mean, there aren't that many film people in a film uh more film centric social media um outfit is maybe not going to be the best way to go in terms of um developing an audience for your film it could be a music person it could be someone that special is a, 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 um an agency that deals with uh primarily with politics if your film is a political one Susan, we're up against the one thirty out time, and I want to respect your time. But we have four people left with hands up. Do you mind staying a few more? I'm minutes? good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but folks, I'm going to limit it to just the four. So it'll be Richard, Simon, David, and Mark, and that will do it. So Richard, you're up. And you're muted. Up and muted. <laughs> yes. Thank right. you. Thank you. Sorry about that. I'm a voiceover actor too. Um, thank you for your passion and also your down to earth approach here. And I have a question that's kind of related to the last question as well, and a film about death. So, <laughs> um, we uh, partially crowdfunded this film, raised about three hundred thousand dollars, and then went on and finished a three part miniseries. When the strike hit, we decided that maybe the market for three-part miniseries after COVID was less than it was before. And during the strike, cut it into a feature. Nobody's seen it. But we have a really established audience. We have a couple of really cult people in it, right? And what we're considering right now, we're, we're just starting out. We, festivals, possibilities, straight to streaming. We're open to anything. But because we can identify I like our your partners, attitude, <laughs> um, I like yours too. Thank you both. Um, but because we're just starting out and we're we're clean right here, we can reach an audience. Uh, we can reach very target this audience. It's a very specific audience, and we can target them with a film that we think will go way beyond this audience and sell directly to them. We want to set. We have seventeen hundred. Uh, backers we'd love to get the film out to them now and market specifically self-distribute first as sort of a hybrid distribution will can we can we by selling a lot of copies right now to that niche market help build our distribution attractiveness and and build the deal we get from a streamer or from someone else who wants to distribute it or is that like we're going to kill the market by selling too many to the niche. That's a really good question. And I don't feel equipped to answer that because I don't, I, I think it's someone who is more of an expert in this, this, the distribution side of what that means would be better because a potential distributor is going to see you sort of cannibalizing. I, you know, I don't know you, you're saying you have a very big group of people just, through your crowdfunding and whatever whatever else you've done. Um, but yeah, they're gonna want that audience. Um, it, it you know, it 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 could work in your favor, but I I don't feel I don't feel equipped to answer that. I don't know enough about the film. I don't know what you're what you're really looking at. And I one thing I will say, um, and this goes back to what you were bringing up Brian Newman earlier um, and I was at Louis B. Mayer who is the most interesting new deals are being cut. It's people are like it, the hybridity of it all is super interesting. So what may have been an absolutely do not do that a year ago is that could possibly work. So that's, that's something that, um, a sales agent is better equipped to answer um, than I am. I, I it, it makes perfect sense, um, but 
you could harm a potential deal or it could enhance a potential deal or you could have a very interesting hybrid arrangement but again it, it there's so many factors that that's content that you know that depends on but um i like i like your openness to the the possibilities though because you know on one hand while we're um complaining understandably about the state of distribution you know it, it seems in many ways more limited but i do think um there is more of an openness um to different hybrid forms now there's going to have to be um not only among filmmakers but among distributors thanks richard um simon you are up yeah. Okay, uh, Susan, thanks for all your tips. Um, I'm interested, um, what advice would you give to a new uh, documentary filmmaker to find the right sales agent for them to meet their particular needs? Uh, are there any particular websites, databases or anything, any tips? So much. I think, you know, they're they're really very finite group. This is, this is, I, I've said this a couple of times in a couple of different ways. I'm amazed there aren't more sales agents, more film sales agents, more film publicists, um, specialists. Um, I think that, um, you know, just the, on this, just the people in this group, and there's a large number, you're, you're going to get, it's 10, it, you know, 10, 12. It's not much more than that. It's easy enough just to, you know, someone could just put them all in a chat. Yeah, you can go to Filmmaker Magazine. You can go to I, the IDA website. You'll see. Go to the IDA website. Start with that. There'll be they'll. I I know every year or two there'll be some sort of a definitive list. You know, here are the doc distributors to pay attention to. Here are the doc sales agents to pay attention to. Um, um, I also think being going out and about. I use Doc NYC as an example. I don't know where you're based, but if you're in one of the larger centers where there is a film festival documentary or otherwise, and there are panels and so on, you'll, you'll, um, you know, maybe you won't meet an actual sales agent there, um, but you'll, you know, be in the audience for a panel about finding a sales agent or the process of selling your film. Uh, no databases exactly, but all sorts of, places where you can get that information. But I will always say, talk to other filmmakers um, about their experiences, their that's recommendations. The, that's the word. Yeah, that's, this is the thing. That's, this is what this forum is. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's a, it's not a long list. It's a very short list. In fact, yeah. um, we have a distribution topic on our forum. And you could um, there, you can use the search engine to see who's asked the question before. Yeah, we can just not that. Yeah, thanks, Susan. Um, David, and then Mark will wrap it up. Hi, Susan. Thanks for being here. Uh, I'm interested to know. You mentioned a couple times that these very specific social issue documentaries you tend to shy away from a little bit, and I was interested to know, you know. What is what is a what is a doc in particular that that the kind of doc that that you feel? And I assume you do you shy away from those because you can't. It's not a good fit, or it's not something you could run with, or it's not. So hey, what you is know it? what? It's funny because it's not about it's funny. It's it's about it's about personal taste and sensibility. Like it's very personal to me. So I, I, there's no value judgment at all. Um, and it's not what I'm most effective at. And it also is going to depend on the issue because there's some people that have real, you know, like I think of there's, you know, particular, there's a company out of a PR company out of, out of uh, DC that really specialize in political documentaries. They're out of DC. Um, and they're, you know, they do, they do film and that's, you know, there aren't that many film publicity companies that specialize in music or specialize in social issue docs. 
and I've done a ton of social issue docs, but I guess when it, when it, when the, I guess what I sort of you shy away from or I feel is usually less of a fit is are those those social issue docs where the issue is um where 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 the where the content is it I'm interested in really strong filmmaking and it's and you can make a strong you can make a social issue doc where the filmmaking is really strong it doesn't have to be artistic per se but I I guess I'm looking at I I, I do tend to gravitate towards um uh those you know more more creative docs and they're not necessarily the social issue docs but sometimes they can be so but i think you can actually really run with a lot of social issue docs um they're actually that's where you can find tap into all uh, really big audiences that aren't necessarily there for the you know some of the artier <laughs> <laughs> um, docs that I'm I'm most most well, interested in, but I I don't I'm almost sorry that I brought up the whole social issue doc thing, um, because I don't want you to feel like that's limiting. It, I'm the one that has the limitations. Not the, um, the best, best way to get a sense of Susan's taste is just go to her website and look at the films that she's been involved with. They just yeah before your eyes. I mean, I read off. A list of a good dozen of the documentaries. Um, Norget.com. Um, and finally, uh, wait, did we mark? Mark. No, oh, I'm here. Okay. Thank you, Susan, for educating us. And over the last year, I realized that these personal documentaries are much more successful in a PBS form versus a, a feature form. Can you tell me? Um, you said you you're you're not involved. As in a sixty in short... minute form? Is that what you mean? Yeah, fifty seven. Oh. A, a, a PBS cut. Um, so you said you don't work with short films, but do you work with PBS cuts and the PBS distribution? I don't. I've worked with. Um... No, I don't. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> I've worked with. The films that end up, I've worked with a bunch of films that have ended up on POV, for instance, but they have their own people. Um, I did a film called Casa Susana that was on American Experience not that long ago. So for instance, I'll be attached to a film that might end up um, in a shorter cut in a shorter cut um, on a PBS. Um, but I haven't worked with um, hour long films, but so what? I mean, so, yeah. film is a film is a film. <laughs> so to wrap things up, Susan, thanks everybody for your questions. Um, Let's give you a chance to do a little promotion of yourself and the no, film. No no, no. no, no. I mean, what are you working on now? What films are you working with? And also tell um, us about the films that you are producing or ex executive producing. Oh, OK. Well, Sundance is coming up. So I have a bunch of um, we have five docs and one um, narrative film. Uh, the five docs are War Game by Tony Gerber and Jesse Moss. Oh my God, I'm feeling like I'm going to forget somebody. <laughs> uh, the Mother of All Lies, which I've been working on since forever, which um, was in, I first had it in Cannes and it's um, had a really wonderful life. Um, it's uh, won the best doc prize in, um, can and the directing prize in a sense of a god 
and was just uh, nominated for a um, Spirit Award and a PGA Best Doc Award and won the Best Director uh, Prize, uh, IDA, a couple of days ago, but and was also nominated for Best Feature, da, da, da. Anyway, it's in the Spotlight Program, which I mentioned earlier. Um, and then a really incredible um, essay film, uh, the great title, um, soundtrack, soundtrack to a coup d'etat uh, by a really remarkable um, Belgian um, documentarian. Um, oh, Black Box Diaries, Japanese um, film, um, uh, first time filmmaker. She's a journalist. Uh, and it kind of uh, unfolds like a thriller. Um, she investigates um, her own sexual assault. It's um, it's a really fascinating film, a really, really brave film. Um, what else? I'm forgetting something which I knew oh, I would do. It's and okay, but you know what's so me. interesting? What's so and interesting? And then the, the, the film that I'm producing um very much in the development phase stage is with a really fantastic uh documentary filmmaker Renan Alexandrovitz who is uh, Israeli he lives in Philadelphia um uh he made uh, he's best known for a documentary called uh, the law in these parts which won the Grand Jury Prize in Sundance a number of years ago in World Doc. I did a film called The Inner Tour, um, um, The Viewing Booth, which is uh, his most recent film. And all I'll say about this film is it's a documentary about time. <laughs> what, I, what I love, is is you just gave an example of how you work, which is, you know, a journalist, um, a distributor, a sales agent, somebody in the industry will chat with you and ask you what you're working on. And you give these very succinct descriptions that also um, make you want to see the film. <laughs> Except apparently I forgot one of my films. Well, we'll overlook that. But um, maybe, maybe, maybe it'll come back to me in the next few seconds. Okay. But um, it was really, really interesting to hear you answer that question, because that's exactly how you operate. You know, it's all done, you know, in a in a way where you can talk very briefly about these films, but also make it um, explain why you you want to be a part of it and why you're excited to be representing it. So um, so that was that was great to hear. Um, Thank you so much for being here. The time is fun. Um...